be sure to have the following tools ready when setting up your machine. A box cutter or blade to cut open the packaging, a pry bar, a crowbar, or large screwdriver and hammer to separate the shipping skids from the machine, a bubble level for leveling the machine, a 1 3 8 inch or adjustable open end wrench, and a screwdriver with a Phillips head. Your machine was thoroughly inspected before leaving the factory and the delivery carrier has accepted responsibility for this machine. It is very important that you inspect the exterior of all cartons for damage upon receipt from the freight line. Damage in transit, although infrequent, does happen. Nearly all damage in transit can be determined from a visual inspection of cartons. Look for any damage to the cardboard corners. The machines are shipped in clear plastic. Look for tears in the plastic and inspect them closely. Take photos of any external damage to packaging before removing it. If this visual inspection reveals nothing, then the machine has probably been received in good condition. If any carton is received in a damaged condition, it is very important that you follow these steps. First, note any damage on the freight line's delivery receipt. Specify where the damage is located. Take photos of the damage. Second, contact the factory at 800-247-1787 for additional instructions. Send photos of the damage to damage at witchern.com. Include serial number and tracking number of shipment. Again, please inspect all equipment thoroughly before signing for it and before the driver leaves. Any questions pertaining to damaged equipment should be referred to the factory. Follow these steps to remove the shipping skids. Use a Phillips head screwdriver or powered screwdriver to remove the screws on both crossboards and lift the boards out. Then remove the screws on the side to take out the two lifting blocks. If the crossbar is still wedged underneath, removing the final pieces of wood will dislodge it. To split the wood from the legs, drive a screwdriver or crowbar in the slit in the wood. Use the hammer to knock away the wood from the legs. Discard the wood skids when removed. Leveling the machine is an important step. A level machine allows the door to operate and close properly as well as other items within the machine to move correctly. Properly leveling the door and the cabinet is essential to a well working machine. The door will lock easily and the cabinet will seal correctly with the door and the baffle to provide security. Using a level, place it on top of the machine. Do not put the bubble level on the door, but instead make sure it is on the cabinet. Using a 1 3 8 open end wrench, adjust the cabinet legs until the machine is level from side to side and front to back. Repeat the same process with the locker. Here's the machine display. These two openings right here can be used for card readers. In the middle here is the keypad. Down here is the delivery bin door. Inside the door on the upper left you can find the machine serial number. Here's the view from inside the machine of the opening that can be used for card readers held on by four 11 32nd inch nuts. The keypad and the top opening are held in by four nuts as well. To access the control board cover, lift the cover off. Here's the power cord that goes into the control board, the display, the motor harness connection, the door switch, the iVent sensor, and the keypad. Here is the internet connection going into the control board. Finally, here below the red light is the service mode button. There are also openings for other accessory items. Up here is the door switch. Down near the delivery bin is the iVent sensor system. Here's the infrared light emitter board that senses when a product passes into the delivery bin. The red light goes off when an item passes through. Open the connection box in the back of the machine by loosening four screws with a Phillips screwdriver. Then lift off the cover and place it on the side so you do not lose it. Take out the power cord and plug it into the wall. Make sure the red light is solid. 
Then take the Ethernet cord provided by the customer and plug it into the wall jack. Take the other end and plug it into the back of the machine here. Then route the cords under the cover so they emerge from the openings provided. After the covering is in place, tighten the four screws. Find the key taped to the delivery box. It will have yellow tape on it with the word key on it. Remove it from the plastic packaging. Unlock the door. The power switch is inside the machine. Power on by flipping the switch. You will need to remove the plastic tray inserts. Simply lift up on the tray and remove the white plastic insert like so. When removing a tray, make sure the machine is powered off. Then disengage the tray harness. Then lift up on the tray and push the tabs up so the tray can slide out. Make sure you grab the tray securely on both sides when lifting out. When placing the tray back in the machine, make sure the wheels are in line with the rails. After the tray is in the machine, lift up on the tray and push the tabs back down, securing the tray in place. Then plug the tray harness back in. To move your tray up or down, first remove the two screws here on the rail using a Phillips screwdriver or drill. Then unhook the rail from the back and move to the desired spot. Make sure the front and back are moved the same number of notches so the tray will remain level. Once the rail has been moved to the new location, you can tighten the screws back into place. To move the rail on the right side, start by taking out these two screws in the front. Then remove the rail by unhooking the latch in the back. Move the rail the same amount the left one was moved and then secure the rail into its new position. First, lift up on the tabs on the end of the black motor cover on the tray and slide it across the tray before lifting it off like this. First, lift up on the tabs on the end of the black motor cover on the tray and slide it across the tray before lifting it off like this. Lift the motor up and pull the coupler and coil out. Rotate the coil to the new desired position. Coil positioning is listed as a clock position. Standard is 6 o'clock. In this example, we moved it to the 12 o'clock position. Connect the coupler back onto the motor. Make sure the fins on the coupler are placed in the slots in the back of the tray. To remove the coupler from the coil, push it in and twist it so that it can slide out through the openings. To connect the coil and coupler, Place the coupler fins between the last two coil strands and snap the coupler in the coil like so. Now reconnect the coupler to the motor. When replacing the motor, make sure the wires are connected to the new motor correctly. Unhook the motor from the coupler and disconnect the wires from the motor with a set of pliers. Then slide the motor off the tray. Place the new motor in the tray and attach the wires where they belong. The motor specific wire, in this case blue, goes just beneath the red and white common wire. Connect the coupler back onto the motor.
remove the wires from the single motors with a pair of pliers. Then unhook the motors from the couplers and replace them with a dual motor. The common red and white wire goes on the side connection here. The motor specific wire goes onto the green board connection. When you are finished, slide the motor cover back on and snap into place. To begin loading, lift the tray up and fold down. Place the product securely between the coils. If there are any products that do not fit in their given selection, please make adjustments to accommodate. All adjustments must be noted on the install sheet. If no adjustments can be made and new parts are needed, please document on the install sheet and contact VENNET at 800-833-4411. The service mode button can be found inside the machine on the upper right portion of the control board. After pressing the service mode button, you will see restock options on the display. When scrolling through the service mode options, the star button is scroll left and the pound button is scroll right. Zero is enter and eight is back up. On the first set of options in service mode, you can select from hardware, configuration, vendivation, and restock options. Pressing service mode, you will see restock options. After scrolling to the hardware option by pressing star, press zero and you can see the current motor count. Always do a motor count when you receive the machine and after making any changes to the configuration. Press zero to perform the motor count. The machine will count how many active motor signals it has received. In this menu, you can scroll using the pound key to test vend. Pressing 0 will get you into the test vent options. Here you can select to test vent a single motor, a range of motors, or all motors. For example, when selecting range, you will be asked what range of motors you would like to test. Follow the prompts on the display. Hit 0 after entering each motor. Then the machine will test the motors. You will see the text spinning on the display. Here is a single test vend on selections 131 and 140. To lock the machine, close the door and twist the handle to tighten it. Then, when the handle is vertical, push the handle into the door to secure the machine. 